and there is the Brisbane River and what a beautiful day it is again here in Brisbane. A little exercise on the river and there is the live scene here at ANZ Stadium, the home of the Commonwealth Games in 1982, home of the Broncos for a number of years and here is the self-proclaimed coach of the day, Kenny, ready to give his lesson. <laughs> oh, you're a harsh man. <laughs> well, he gave Wayne uh, Arthur's a lesson on Friday. He thought he'd have to become a national hero in uh, about two and a half hours and had a bit of the world's number two. Yeah, it's always a bit dangerous, isn't it? You, if you open your mouth before you actually uh, do the deed, it's a very dangerous situation to be in. You can only uh, hurt yourself by saying too early. I think you're going to give someone else a lesson, but we'll see. I know that fired late and you it up a little bit. And you can hear the crowd now really raising their tempo as the young South Australian walks on the court. Well, John Newcomb just couldn't wait to tell Leighton uh, what Eugenie had said to fire him up. And uh, Leighton was just on the football field just minutes before coming out on the court, warming up with muddy waters, going through their running routine. He looked very relaxed and confident uh, when he was practicing this morning at about uh, 10 o'clock. Maybe he doesn't know what it's like to lose in David Cup. He, <laughs> just, he just doesn't believe it's going to happen, maybe. He's 3-0 he and so far. He doesn't know uh, anything about uh, being nervous. He's really just concentrating on playing his very, very best tennis, and that's the best attitude, that's the best way to go about it. Uh, others can uh, speculate on being nervous, he's just concentrating on playing his best tennis and how best to play Evgeny. John Newcomb's had quite a bit to say to him uh, about that, about the uh, strategy. They're not going in uh, blindly, they're going in with a specific idea of trying to break down Evgeny's forehand, which is his stronger weapon, a more dangerous weapon, maybe not quite as reliable normally as his backhand. I think during the rally, the forehand he would like to use more, but on the first return of serve, as we saw in the doubles yesterday, his backhand is quite lethal. He's got such a lot of room for error, uh, the backhand return. It's a short back swing, beautiful timing. He really hurts players when they serve and volley his backhand. So I think we'll see Hewitt really direct his first serve and the second serve too, by the way, to the forehand, particularly on the first court. Also a little bit down the middle to the second court, but watch for the wide serve to the forehand from Hewitt a lot. Not much eye contact between the players at all. Just Guinea turning away. And Leighton Hewitt concentrating on the task at hand. Court looked as good as ever this morning. And uh, Leighton Hewitt is adapting very well to it. It's uh, very hard underfoot. Two career titles to his credit. One uh, at the incredibly young age of 16 in Adelaide. There's his Davis Cup record also. Still only 18 years of age. His current ranking is 31, but that is on a rocket. He, uh, you would expect, would uh, end the year probably close to the top 20 in the world, Leighton Hewitt get to play a doubles match for Australia, but uh, we don't need him to play doubles if he continues to win all of his singles matches. <laughs> really is a, an exceptional youngster, uh, mature beyond his years on a tennis court. And I'm sure he believes he can beat Kapelnikov here today. And here is Yevgeny Kapelnikov. He is 25 years of age. He is from Sochi in Russia. He is currently ranked two in the world. He has 19 career titles, two grand slams, he is the greatest tennis player in Russian history and by some margin. And his record in Davis Cup and on the tour is that of an Iron Man. No one plays more tennis than Yevgeny Kapelnikov. The umpire for the first tie today is from Britain, Mike Morrissey. During moment uh, just minutes ago on the centre court as the fanatics struck up the national anthem and every person in the stadium stood and sung and then applauded. The most 
the wealth stream from Carter Park. Yeah, something like that really can uh, be infectious towards the crowd. They, they all of a sudden uh, realise that every single person in this stadium is on Leighton Hewitt's side. I think it just raises their heartbeats a little bit, gets them involved in the match. They want Australia to win badly. Can only help the Australian team. John Newcomb, who has been involved with Davis Cup for a long period of time as uh, <laughs> an orange boy as a player. Bajenski, Suk, Alotsky. Cruel. Ladies and gentlemen, Russia won the top and chose to serve. Australia has never lost in the Davis Cup tie when it has led to love. Sign. Russia has come back once against Germany in the semi final. 1995. Well, down, please. Uh, we have a great sporting weekend on seven this weekend, but much more coming up. I think it'll be very interesting, Jay, to see if Kaselnikov serves and volleys anywhere near as much as he does the other day. I don't think so. Having to serve from the southern end into the sun in the open game. Only as nasty as it comes today. It's not a good start for Yevgeny. Four double faults in one game to concede serve against Wayne Arthur in the opening day. His rhythm on the second serve was thrown. With his desire to serve and volley, and that's a nervous low volley. Push long, oh, 30. Well, John, the serve and volleying from the Russian is not his major strength. He's better off to stay back a little bit. If he serves and follows all day here against Stuart, you wouldn't expect him to win. Maybe on the first serve, but he's well advised, I would think, to stay back a lot on his second. Two break points in the open game. Fine return. The ball early and ripping it across court.
embarrassed to break in the opening game. Leighton Hewitt has broken Yevgeny Pekosolnikov. Australia leads one love. An electric atmosphere here at ANZ Stadium on the change of end. Hewitt charged the moment he hit the backhand passing shot. And he is fired up. Good to serve. Polnikov after he made that error. Well, I've found Kitomsov very confusing so far in this match. Firstly, the seven volley on the second ball so much, particularly on a break point. And then in that rally, he hit four or five slice back ends in a row. And you rarely see that from the Russian. He virtually always hits through the back end with a two-hander. I think you see, John, as this match goes on, Kitelnikov, not only when he's receiving serve, but when he's serving himself, he will stay back a little bit and rally, and then try to move in at the appropriate moment. Oh. The Russian's not happy with that call. Some of the players on the bench stood up. And the Russian captain also inquiring now to film the top. Jenny has challenged an awful lot of calls over the past couple of days. Pretty old. The tactic that John Newcomb spoke of, about attacking the forehand, that comes with sliding, slicing serve, very much on the green section of the court that's going to skid through. Russia is known as the potato serve. Deep. I feel sure it's the son from this end for, Le for Leighton. He had trouble two days ago against Marat Staffan from this end for a period of the match. Said most of his double faults from this southern end into the sun. which is understandable. Enormous tension on the center court.
Uh, Leighton Hewitt describes himself as an aggressive baseliner and he was the one that had more courage to go closer to the line, which drew the final error. The two-hander just picking up the pace, taking the ball earlier, just centimetres inside the sideline. That's it. Kosselnikov doesn't have a lot to hurt the Hewitt game because of their similar matchup, similar styles. It's proved to be correct so far. He's not hurting Hewitt from the back of the court. Leighton oh. didn't like that call. Leighton maintaining that Chalk came up and Mike Morrissey. My first instinct, John, that it was wide and, and uh, I can't see a reason to change my mind after the replay, but when the court gets a bit dry like that, there's a lot of, uh, besides the Chalk, there's a bit of dust that flies also. The ball up near the baseline here certainly seemed to have been long. And here, Kotelnikov not putting enough on the approach shot. It was high over the net. The bounce came up. Leighton went at it aggressively, made the passing shot. Mike took back to do. Already a contest. That's the serve he needs to work today. That wide one to the first court. Probably his favourite serve. And the other day, he didn't make it often enough. He didn't get enough free points against Marat Safin. But today, he really needs that one to be a good weapon for him. Love the that time, Pritchard, for the first time, it looked like he was going to remain on the baseline after the serve. It did. First time in three days. We'll see that a lot, I feel sure. He has to stay back on the second serve. Otherwise, John, if he serves and volleys on his second serve, it's probably the weakest part of his game against the strengths of Hewitt, the biggest strength. Leighton loves the target. Not much he can do when a ser first serve is that good close to the line, but Leighton's strength is that he loves the target. He likes hitting the ball at a small area. He likes the guy coming at him at the net. That would be a bad matchup for the time of the
this is very interesting, isn't it? Because Kapelnikov is not hurting Hewitt at all from the back of the court. And he is one of the best rallyers in the game, John, from the back of the court. And Leighton is certainly staying with him. What John Newcomb uh, said before the matches began. And he continues to struggle with the second serve to Tolnikov. second serve there's just no margin there he's not kicking the ball at all he's hitting it so flat for a double fault for the game and Leighton Hewitt oh, yeah. breaks again Australia leads by two breaks three games to love opening set fourth rubber well, the skinny Kapelnikov has totally lost his composure a more fragile sight I haven't seen from a world's number two very tentative and halting second serve double fault and he really uh, is quite distraught at this time. Leighton Hewitt serving, leading three love, two breaks. Well, one thing's for sure, John, so far in this match, it's been going 18 minutes, hasn't even looked like being a tennis lesson from the Evgeny Kosomikov. This is on for young and old. Stewart is on top, certainly at the moment. Oh. Ooh. Hmm. Late not questioning that one. I thought that might have been worth worth a question. And Jenny has no rhythm. He's halting, he's tentative. And he just can't find his game. Forehand not hit with its normal authority, guided towards the line, just pushed wide. Being very experienced, he's trying to settle during this first set now. Call now for information on a club near you. Tennis, you're going to love it. Tony Costa, club four, first set. Well, Yevgeny hit as good a second serve as he could possibly hit. He really went for that one. He made a volley as good as he could make it. And Hewitt still nearly knocked off a winner. Exquisite tennis. 
from Leighton Hewitt, the dipping return, drawing Gasolnikov closer to the net on the bluff. He holds it back and then goes to the top spin lob, played to perfection. a better start to this match from Australia's point of view. Hewitt is barely missing the ball and Kofelnikov, after all of his bold it. statements through the week, particularly last night when he said he was going to give Leighton Hewitt a tennis lesson, is all at sea. Kofelnikov did another pretty good second serve and the return was just too high on that occasion from Hewitt. Watch how high this goes over the net and anything above the height of the net you'd expect a class player like Kofelnikov to knock it off. that when uh, Kofelnikov approaches the net, he doesn't try to pass necessarily the first ball, just keeps it really low and gives him, tries to give him an awkward half volley or low volley. Okay, well, Russia is on the board. Australia leads 4-2, 4-1, and two breaks. Full house again at ANZ Stadium. It has been a marvellous venue for tennis, as it has been for so many other sporting events. Late and Hewitt serving. 4 1, two breaks of serve. Tactically advising Yevgeny Kafelnikov, this is how you'd want him to play. If you make a good deep return and draw a short reply from Hewitt, then you use the forehand to drill into one of the corners and then come in. Build your game from the back of the court. opponent all over the court, manoeuvring him and then finally approaching the net. Mr. Tolnikov out of court, heavily top sun ball dips down just inside the baseline. I had a feeling that might have caught a bit of the frame, that one. It was a little <laughs> bit fortunate to drop in. Uh, 
majority of those points. If you hit a good first serve in like that, hit your opponent straight in, it, it draws a short return back with no speed on it. And that's pretty much a gimme for Hewitt and if his uh, talent to just drill that ball into the corner. And if he gets it near the baseline, he'll win the point 90% of the time. because Leighton Hewitt has played so magnificently from the first point. Oh. Love oh. You know, I thought it was interesting in that last game, John. Yeah, Jenny did play a couple of good points. He got himself up 15-40. Excuse me, 15-30. Uh, Leighton played a good point to get the 30 all, and then he missed a very easy return of serve. He, he had the opportunity there, really, to get one break back, but he wasn't able to take it. Couldn't lift his game to the next level, so struggling again now on the serve. Felnikov has to get that first serve working wide to the first court. One of his favourite serves also. Probably not as much as Hewitt, but he hasn't been making it so far in his first set too often. He's got some talent though, hasn't he? Yes, Evgeny really is a very complete player. Nice touch there for low backhand volley. Oh, good, and the quality of the return limiting what Kafelnikov could do with the first volley. Couldn't really hurt late and got a good hit at the passing shot. up this time trying desperately to play his way into this match he can really hold any uh, hopes of really winning the first set but he'd like to find some form find some rhythm new ball like you are serving for the opening set five two here. Not an easy ball to really put a lot on there from Hewitt. It was low, pretty short. Had to hit it with a heavy top spin and it went straight to the Kofelnikov forehand. I wonder if the five set yesterday after a single match the day before has had any effect on Kofelnikov early in this match? Well, we all thought that it wouldn't because he just has such a tough schedule. But uh, looking at him now, you could uh, possibly think he's a little bit physically flat.
nursing the approach shot there. He's getting it, not taking it uh, on the rise. See it in replay. This one was short. Just really not sticking it enough. And Hewitt there with a beautiful passing shot. And cross court, which is his favourite off the two-hander. keeping the ball in play when Kisolikov approaches the net, looking to pass on the next uh, ball. It's unfortunate with the uh, net cord. 30 all. Yeah, good tennis there from Kisolikov. He's a complete player, all right. Certainly, Stewart wasn't expecting him uh, to sneak in. Keeps this one short, and he he just sneaks in there just when uh, Hewitt had his eye on the ball instead of his opponent. Very smart play, great point. just played the best game uh, from his point of view for the match so far. He really did put a good game together there from start to finish. Did some very smart things in the middle of that game and then knocked off a big forehand on the last point as he did on the first point of that game. So maybe just starting to find a bit more form. Leighton Hewitt in Australia still with one break of serve up this week. angle beautiful return of serve and Evgeny just struggling into the middle of the court Leighton could possibly have done a bit more with that backhand he really does like to drag the backhand across court that time he had to go down the line The double faults keep coming. Up to six. Well, that was a bit fortunate there. That was off the frame, I feel sure. He did intend to drop the ball short. Let's have a look to see whether you can tell here whether this ball comes off his uh, the bottom part of the frame, I think. Certainly caught some strings, but a bit lucky there. You think that's Leighton Hewitt's favourite pass, Jay? Absolutely. He loves dragging this two sisters straight back across court. Finding the angle there, the wider he goes, the more the angle is, is exposed. 40 30. did on the first day. He says four in one game in the first set against Wayne Arthur.
And Jenny hangs on to serve, stays within sight. Australia will serve and set after the break. Players coming back on court. And now Leighton Hewitt serving for this first set for the second time. And in the context of this match, this is a very large game. Hewitt does not want to let Kafelnikov back into this match after being all over him so far in this first set. He's broken back once, the Russian. If he does it again, you'd have to consider him favourite probably then to win this set. The first one he really was pressing on, the second one just trying to keep the ball in play. Goodness, and that ball missed by a long way. So three break points now to Russia to level his first set. at his best when he really has to fight. 15, 14. And this time it's Kapelnikov dominating with his forehand and then Leighton taken out of court comes up with the winner right on the baseline, chalk flying everywhere. 15, 40. On the reverse angle, Leighton is staying aggressive, probing deep to the baseline and then on this short ball, a flash. 30-40, two break points saved. But then after forehand down the line, he rushes his feet as if he might have gone to the net. 
And then Parisi, in retrospect, you think that that would have been the better bet. Great point for the fourth time for Russia to level this first set. Kotomasov was in position there. He got the short ball that he wanted. He ran around the backhand and take it on the forehand where he can probably be a bit more aggressive. And hit it in the tape. I think he really pulled up on that one. I thought he got very tense as he approached that shot. Couldn't find the courage to really go for it. Giving the pressure. There's no two ways about it. That's you. And now finally set points for Australia. Had the courage to go into the net. Got the short ball, hit it with all he had. Pulled hard the net and safely volleyed into the open court after 47 minutes. 18-year-old Leighton Hewitt has won the first set against the world's number two. Kenny Kapolnikov serving first game of the second set. You just get the feeling here, though, that Kotelnikov is toughen up now. He's played himself into a little bit of form in the last three or four games. But, you know, it's interesting, John, Leighton barely made a mistake in the first uh, 20 or 25 minutes of the match. Then he actually took his foot off the pedal a little bit. He backed off slightly, played a little bit safe, and his game went off slightly as well. So that enabled Kipelmikov to lift his game. So Hewitt, again, needs to be aggressive. Play his own free-flowing game. Eight double faults in a fraction over one set. That's too many. Well, it's a combination, I think, of Kafelnikov giving Leighton three points on the double fault, and then serving and volleying and giving Hewitt a target, which he likes. That frees Leighton up to really go for his shot. Two break points. Big second serve. He took a chance there. The turn didn't miss by that much.
Good positive play, just overplaying the volley a fraction. <laughs> he did the right thing there, didn't he? He, he, he really did. And that's what uh, he's been working on, Darren Cahill. To be aggressive, to take those early balls, develop his game. At the beginning of the year, Darren said to Leighton that he didn't care if his ranking remained in the 90s during the year. He wanted his game to develop. He'd much rather see that happen than improve his ranking to 50, playing conservative, safe tennis. Break point for Australia. Yeah. It's a big difference, doesn't it, when you get that first delivery in. Get a couple of big ones in this game for Tom Stock, and get himself out of trouble. Tomstock finally hangs on and wins the first game of the second set. Stadium. Lake Hewitt over the Sydney Catholicor 6 4. Catholicor controls the uh, first game of the second set. A tight encounter. Lake Hewitt had led 5 1 in the first set and Sydney came back. Hewitt serving from the northern end. down the line on the backhand that time. Great majority of backhands go across court on the pass. Again, the sliding backhand as Eugenie comes to the net. And Eugenie was there. I wasn't too, too close to the line. And he should have won the point from that position. I think the sun might still be bothering him on the southern end. <laughs> Good scramble. Scraping the ball over the net, so a little bit of luck for Leighton there. Through to 40 love. Well, there was a gust of wind there. 
as Leighton threw the ball up to serve, it affected his ball toss. He got away with the second serve, but Kafelnikov tries one of the lowest percentage shots you could ever imagine and gets away with it. You can see the, the net there pushing back. The wind coming from the Hewitt end of the court caused that ball to stop dead. service game that Leighton Hewitt has played for about the last half an hour. He really did uh, play a good one there. He struggled a little bit towards the end of the first set. Fortunately for him, he came back from love 40 there at 5-4 to win the first set, and that was a big turnaround. But now he seems to be quite relaxed again. One all. Hewitt gets away with this. The short return got him into trouble on this particular point, but he really did scramble well again. Lou Hogue would have been happy with that half volley, but that was when Pat Rafter was hitting them like that. So we can refer to Pat now a little bit on those types of shots. What a great pickup. Bad break, Hitting freely again now, Leighton Hill. Really aggressively from the back of the court, full blooded forehand, one corner and then the other, and Kadonikov just couldn't make the ground. Doing some pressure now, 30 all. Mm. Leighton showing how he felt he's a bit unlucky there. That ball caught the tape, may well have been a winner if that had cleared the net. He rips this into the tape sure that would have been a cold winner down the line. He doesn't do enough with his backhand volley to come across. Should have done more with it. You should have got the ball away from Hewitt. Once you give a player of this caliber another chance to hit a pass, that's where he's at his best. Back to Juice. situation. The Felnikov Jay is not doing enough with the first volley. And he's been caught twice in a row, moving wide to hit this backhand volley. He goes back towards the center of the court and here he can't change his directions again to get back to cover the back another backhand volley. So Hewitt now with a big opportunity break point.
And that was a darn good overhead under trying circumstances. Good dig out on the low backhand volley too. Beautifully controlled down the line. Leighton really made him uh, earn the point one more time. I'm having to play this rather awkward overhead. At you. Well, you could see the tension there being exhaled a little bit from John Newcomb on the side of the court. He knew that was a big point and one of the better rallies of the match so far. Both players really testing each other. before a double fault had come up. Well, he tried to press, didn't he? Yes. Pressing on the second serve. Him double fault. And great point for Australia. The momentum is now with Leighton Hewitt. He can just convert. Australia lead a set and the break 2-1 in the second set. Now, Leighton Hewitt started off his match in marvellous form, winning the first four games, but the form in the last couple of games has been even better. John, I just cannot understand for the life of me why Kostonikov continues to serve and volley on the second serve, because it causes him to press sometimes, serve double fault. He goes for more than he normally would because he knows if he doesn't, Hewitt's going to ram the ball down his neck. And even if he hits a good second serve, it's still the type of play Hewitt likes. He likes someone coming at him. I think Kafelnikov's losing at least 70% of the points he serves and volleys on on the second ball. That's good play. Now that's more like the structure of a point that suits Kafelnikov. He's not a true serve and volleyer like a Pat Rafter who can go in behind sometimes even a, a poor second serve and still win the point because he does his athleticism and his court craft at the net. But Thornikoff needs to build the point from the back of the court. Not that Pat Rafter throws in too many weak second serves. He doesn't, but he's a good enough volleyer to to win the point if, uh, if that actually happens. He remains calm under pressure, doesn't he? And he looked confident before he served that ace. You now he's down off 30. Terrific junior, this kid. <laughs>
Well, he made the wrong choice, didn't he? And it's not his favourite backhand, that one down the line, Jay, as you've, as you've already mentioned. He'd like to go across court predominantly. Saw a bit of an opening there down the line, but he wasn't quite in position, and he knew it was a lower percentage shot as soon as he made the mistake. Two break points now to Russia. Leighton complaining about the wind there, but he made a few errors in that game. Katonikov played a pretty solid one, and we're back on serve. Good long putting volley there by Katonikov. Steady's on serve and Russia leads 3-2 in the second set. Welcome back to AMZ Stadium in Brisbane. Some cloud around. There was even a couple of drops of rain before play began. A swirling breeze from time to time. 28 degrees when the play began here at 11 a.m. And just gotten a little bit warmer. Leighton Hewitt serving. 2-3. Second set, Australia won the first. Six four. Kolnikov is starting to lift the standard of his game. He's, apart from the second serve that he's still missing occasionally, he's got 11 double faults. From the back of the court, he's not missing as much now. And I think if Hewitt is to win this set and the match, he needs to also start going with Kolnikov to another level.
Yes, yeah, that's one of the big advantages that Wayne Arthur, Arthur's had against Evgeny was that the more the match went on, the more he was eliminating Evgeny from the match, whereas the longer this match goes, regardless of the score, the type of tennis is actually allowing Evgeny to play and play himself in to some extent, which is what's happened. Well, if nothing else, it's a very unusual tactic to go for a drop shot like that off a second serve. And I can't imagine you would win more than your fair share if you try that. If you it's very quick, if he gets a good swing at the ball, normally he'll knock it off from that short in the court. in the circumstances of a break point the Selnikov controlled it from the start and you saw the appreciation there of the effort from the Australian bench he was in trouble early Hewitt but he scrambled well he moved wide a couple of times to just dig balls back he finally drew the error so a really good effort there from Leighton Hewitt back to Juice inside the service line, late and waits for it to get up to full height so he can really nail it down into the court. Trying to with add now for three all. Late and questioning the call. With your forehand up the line, Kachunikov really taking a risk. We'll see it on the reverse angle here. the baseline and then for the winner it did appear to be safe on the Briar's side back at you Played a very good point up to Len Leighton. Good, good shot there. But this one, he should have gone back down the line. He gave Kafelnikov a short ball. And Hewitt was way out of position. <laughs> well, I think, I think in fairness, maybe that's uh, the teapot calling the kettle black. 
That's Russian humour. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Yevgeny has uh, questioned more balls than anyone by a long way in this weekend so far. in this match, John. Yes, it's been a bit of a two-edged sword, as it so often is. Leighton has just eased up a little bit, given him the opportunity, but uh, equally, Tomkoff really went for it. He leads 5-2, and Leighton Hewitt just getting a little bit, uh, a little bit edgy in the previous game. Something that he has done from time to time, demonstrated his uh, lack of satisfaction with some of his play, but uh, he is a ferocious competitor. There's no two ways about it. Hewitt serving, 2-5. Well, for a young player, Hewitt hits the lob as good as anyone I've ever seen. He chooses the right time to hit the lob so many times. And he usually hits it just out of reach or at least too far so that the opponent can't put the ball away. A well-constructed point. Oh. 
Hmm. Uh, late and several faults also now starting to creep up a little bit. There are only about half as many as Kafelnikov. The Russian has 11, Hewitt has 6. here to make the low percentage shot. Boy, he hits that very well to get out of trouble. for this step and he certainly has been pressed on serve several times in this second step so trying to still a real chance of getting back an exceptional drop volley here Hewitt I thought he'd really come in on the wrong ball here it wasn't quite deep enough with enough penetration he was always going to be made to play a difficult volley but no one knew he was going to come up with that beautiful feel been a victim to a dead lit cord and this time the net favours the young Australian baseline rally Kafelnikov about three metres behind the baseline there was no way that he was going to chase that one down with a glimmer of hope 15.30 second serve to fell across hit all day and it wasn't good enough Hewitt was composed enough to get out wide and really hit a great return of serve back across court two break points he's getting really hustles uh, on that 15 40 point doesn't he it's almost a quick serve and that's a well advised to try to hold him up in such circumstances one more break point 30 40.
Grasser and Sandon Solly, they erupted on the side of the court after the final winner by Leighton Hewitt. And he's getting really feeling the pressure when he's serving for the set. And now Leighton, 4-5. Australia won the first set. Turned by Kafelnikov right centimeters inside the baseline. Getting stuck with the half volley. It was well picked up, but. Kafelnikov has a slightly better ability to rip the ball down the line as aggressively as he goes across court off the backhand. So after leading 40 love and getting back to 40 30 a loss of that game and that set in that situation would have really knocked the, the wind out of his sails but now he has a, a realistic fighting chance here to win this set think the pressure is really on Kapelnikov because having lost the first set as he gets close to the tiebreaker in the second if he loses this set he's down two sets to love virtually out of the match well especially after serving for the second well and showing signs of being slightly shaken now yes Jenny and Hewitt is pumped again he's been a little flat for the last half an hour but now he can smell the second set. Oh. Oh. Big second serve under pressure there. because in the previous uh, occasion that Kapelnikov served, he went wide to the Hewitt backhand on that second court and got burnt twice at the end of the game to lose his, lose his serve. So he had the courage to go there again.
Tremendous point for Leighton Hewitt. Break point now for Australia. Yes. Yes. Game knows he is absolutely up against it. There's no room to manoeuvre. Kapelnikov's serve now starting to be a bit of a weapon for him. He's been struggling on it all weekend, really. Certainly in his two singles matches. But now winning some uh, free points off that first serve. There's no margin for error, is there, on the second ball, though? No, he certainly uh, has been forced in his own mind, at least that he's got the serve and volley off the second ball. The ball toss goes further forward. It's not got quite the height as his uh, second serve ball toss normally has. <laughs> well, Joe, you've said it before, and that is your favourite backhand pass, but... If you hit it that good and you hit it that close to the line, even if you know it's going, I don't know if you can cover it. Evgeny was waiting for it. He was actually on the left side of the centre service line. Break point again for Australia. There's a tough match. Evgeny really fighting to stay in. He's not going to go away. Might be giving a lesson, but he's got an awfully difficult student here. <laughs> he's, starting to, he's starting to wait for that wide one of the first court. Kapelnikov is just going there a bit too much. And where Leighton is so smart, several times recently, Leighton has gone down the line when taken wide. This time he switches up across court. Element of surprise. Great point for the third time. <laughs> and the double fold. Russia concedes the break. Australia will serve for two sets to love lead when we return. Does Leighton get excited when he wins a big point? <laughs> Nuke, watch out. <laughs> and he looks over Nuke's shoulder and just rams it home to Evgeny. And then Nuke sat with him very quietly on the change of end, just regaining Leighton's composure so he could get settled to serve possibly for the biggest game of his life. A two set to love lead for Australia. This vital fourth rubber. Australia leading two rubbers to one. Love the city. Tennis from Leighton. 
Uh, and believe me, you have to be a good player to play this point under pressure. Kofelnikov did everything he possibly could to stay in this rally, to give Hewitt the chance to make a blunder. But not only did he not do that, he came up with an outstanding winner. Down the line, he threaded the needle under pressure. 15 all. said that Leighton would have to be aggressive. Compromise and conservative tennis will not suit Evgeny. 30 15. Oh, great back in there from the Russian. And he needed that point badly. Well, the backhand of Leighton's here played rather gently across court and Yevgeny goes for it. That's another lesson. He mustn't compromise. He's got to have the courage and go for his shots at this critical moment. And he finds it. Well, good tactics there also from Hewitt. I'm sure Kosomasov was waiting for the wide one there. And Leighton good enough to go down the middle and get the free point. So he's got a set point now to take this match by the scratch of the neck at two sets to love. Kafelnikov serving first game of the third. And John, I wonder if it has entered his mind, and I don't think he'd be human if it hasn't, of how silly it is to talk the talk, as John, you can put it, before you walk the walk. You need to let your actions speak louder than words because he's put himself in a hole here now and mentally he must be just dreading the fact that he'd made the, that statement yesterday. Love yes, the statement was that he was going to give Leighton Hewitt a tennis lesson. It would be a hard lesson for Leighton. But he's dragging the chain. Two double faults now to open this third set. And that will oh. serve a full effort. He's just had the wind knocked out of himself uh, by losing that second set or whether he's literally struggling for air here, Kofelnikov. But he looks like the gas has gone out of his tank early in this third set. Love 40. Serve was close.
and that was Leighton Hewitt's reaction. He went on a sprint. I think he ran 50 metres in about 2.9 seconds. <laughs> I bet Rick was dreading the fact that he had to give him a high five too, because I bet that one stung a little bit. But uh, even more than the fact that Hewitt is pumped and playing well, he's won five games on the trot, more importantly, it looks like the Kofelnikov has now really uh, started to struggle physically. now starting to flow from the racket of Yevgeny. off Wayne Arthur, wouldn't it? <laughs> He'd really be able to enjoy that uh, fifth and final match if it's uh, a dead rubber. The unforced errors by Kotolnikov this game, just trying to press too much. too hard to win this game after the big effort. Oh, oh great shot there from Kip on the top. Put that on the rise. Waiting uh, a little bit for that wide second serve from Hewitt. Just a short back swing and he swats that one down the line. Good timing there. Outstanding. <laughs> they lead two sets to love and two games to love. They lead two games to love. Do you think that'll be on the highlight? Call now for information on a club near you. Tennis, you're going to love it. And Leighton beautifully down the line and with Denny struggling, stretching. He looks tired and he looks beaten. Do you think that diving backhand volley on game point in the previous game will be on the highlight package tonight? Yes, you were about to say that before. <laughs> I got a little excited. Well, you wouldn't be Australian if you weren't excited at the moment. This uh, effort here in the semi-final has gone from high to higher. Leighton's opening match against Marit Safin was something uh, that was extraordinary for a person so young and relatively inexperienced. And then that was exceeded by Wayne Arthur's at 28 against this man. But he's starting to miss now, isn't he? He's hitting a lot of balls long in the last few minutes. Overplaying the forehand, probably trying to win the point too soon. getting deeper and it's getting wider it's starting to turn into a, a chasm 1540 ladies and gentlemen please don't call out between first and second floor. thank you very much
This is huge. Coming up with the wide sliding serve, Peyton Lake now to court as she has so often saving the first break point. <laughs> and serves his way out of what would possibly have been, uh, well, an unassailable deficit. Back to Juice. just gently directed to the feet of the incoming volleyer. Court worn in that area, which creates some uncertainty in the mind of the incoming volleyer. Break point for the third time. Big volley. He's trying still. There's no two ways about that. He had to reach down and dig that one out. Well controlled. Take anything anything less than an exceptional volley here, and he was in trouble, Kapelnikov. Great technique on that low forehand volley. with the forehand down the line, starting to hurt to film the cough a bit. Very accurate shots uh, in recent times, making the Russian cover more court. Leighton Hewitt, covering a lot of ground, getting to the ball quickly. 
beautiful all court point. Getting this one low across court with slice. It wasn't really high enough for Yevgeny to get the ball down the line over the high part of the net, short part of court. 40-15 for a 3-1 lead. Oh, great serving from here. Well, it's not his favourite serve, but boy, he executed it beautifully in that game. Two cold aces near that centre line. And just important here now for him to play each point on its merit. Don't look too far ahead. In the last uh, 10 games or so, his service percentage has risen from 49 to 57%. And his success rate... 55% of winning on the first serve, which is low, up to 60. And Leighton again going cross court with a two-hander this time. Trying to lob when the ball is just searching on the ground. And disguise easily anticipated and put away by Katonikov. Fifteen or one of any sorry, John, he just hasn't been able to put together a run of points at any no. any stage, has he? Well, he's playing a kid who is exceptionally quick. He's one of the better counter punches in the world right now. Maybe the best counter puncher in the world now that Michael Chang has uh, moved on to a certain extent. But it's very hard to play from the back of the court and rally when you don't have huge ground strokes, just steady ones. It's hard to penetrate constantly and beat a counter puncher like Hewitt. And that's exactly what John Newcomb was referring to when he said he didn't have a lot to hurt Hewitt with. Flip up here. That's the situation for Filipov faces. Is that he's down three-one. He's down two sets. Any more mistake here at the wrong time, and he's history. He's at the stage of the match now where he's on a knife edge. He must not make any unforced errors. Australian Davis Cup team over the last several years. Tirelessly with Pat Rafter after Pat Rafter had uh, ended the relationship which had been so fruitful with Bob Carmichael. In his ranking raise from uh, the 300 to 20 in the world. And uh, one of the great coaches in world tennis. Leighton Hewitt serving. 3-2. Not enough spark there at the moment from Kafelnikov. He looks a fraction slow. Maybe the three matches on three days has hurt him a little bit there. He's feeling his toe. He must be under, maybe feeling a bit of pain through his shoe also. But he's just not quite getting the ball quickly enough to be able to knock a few winners off.
John, he can ill afford to do that. That was a simple shot. It's such a crucial stage at 15.30, a chance for a 15.40, a possible break back, getting back into this third set. And he's just missed an easy forehand, but possibly because he wasn't up to it quickly enough. Feeling the pinch. Going across court. Made so many great passing shots across court. This one really hit with venom down the line. And now it's a point for a 4 2 lead. Australia leading two sets to love. Backhand winners 11 to 2. No! Another shot from Pafelnikov, similar to the Hewitt backhand two points ago. That's a class shot. And usually when these boys go down the line with these backhands, it's for a winner. The cross court is usually their safest option when they decide to direct it down the line. Great point. And that's where Leighton has really improved. He's got the courage to seize the opportunity to go to the net and end the point. Not just a baseliner anymore. Not that he was such a bad baseliner. From Yevgeny. And you can see Leighton still pushing himself every inch of the way, dying when he loses the point. Good, well constructed point by Yevgeny, using his chance to come to the net as soon as the ball was locked. It's a great point for Russia to get back into this third set.
you know, Hewitt is incredibly accurate with that second serve down the middle when he decides to go for it because there's not a... Yes, it's over the uh, low part of the net, but there's not a lot of room for error when you hit the ball flat like that down the middle. And he makes it uh, pretty darn well on big points. Back to Juice. Well, Australia. this little bit of luck that went against uh, Kapelnikov just might, in the end, sum up his whole weekend. He's really making a last, last uh, ditch effort here, the Russian. Then he nearly stumbled, he maintained balance, kept the ball in. Australia <laughs> leading two sets to love and 4-2. Oh, clever shot. Well, for a minute I thought the luck was going to continue for Leighton. Pretty good second serve there from Kapelnikov and it jammed Hewitt into the left hip. He got away with a miss hit, but Kasumnikov, very cool.
Clayton Europe now with two breaks. 5-2 in the third set, Australia lead. Two sets of love. He will serve for the match and a place in the finals of the Davis Cup after this break. Eighteen-year-old Leighton Hewitt is about to serve for a place in the finals of the Davis Cup. Some players wait a lifetime to play in a Davis Cup final. Some very good players never get the opportunity. What a moment this is for Hewitt. The world's number two, you're getting to fill Nicole. Kapelnikov is all out of gas. And if anyone's going to have to eat his words, I'm sorry, Evgeny, it's you today. Two points from the win. into the Davis Cup final the first time since 1993. points remain. Wayne Arthur congratulates Leighton Hewitt. It was Pat Rafter who bear hugged him and lifted him into the air. And there's 12,000 people standing here and cheering 18-year-old Leighton Hewitt. Victor over the number two player in the world, Evgeny Kafelnikov, in three straight sets. 
Australia through to the Davis Cup final. You're 18 years of age. You're unbeaten in Davis Cup. You're through to the Davis Cup final. You've just beaten the number two player in the world. How does that feel? Uh, it feels great because uh, I thought I was going to have to get my wallet out this morning once I read that paper and uh, got told I was going to get a good old tennis lesson today on grass. So, uh, you know, there's no better feeling than coming out and beating uh, Finny, a guy who's been mouthing off all week about uh, <laughs> how much they're going to beat him. How important in the context of that match was the last game of the first set we had three break points against you on third? Yeah, it was a big game. Uh, to come out and win that first set and really get on top of him and let him know I wasn't going down today. And, you know, he was in for a dogfight if he wanted to be in it and uh, try and get out of him and win it for his country. Did that fire you up even more? The words that he uh, spoke about uh, the, day, the Australian team, this court, yourself? Bloody oath. Mate, I wanted to come out here and kill him today. And, you know... This is the best moment of my life. Well, how's your French? Because the French have just beaten Belgium 3-love. You're going to play France in France in the final in December. How do you feel your prospects are? We're going to bring home the cup, I can tell you that. Best of luck, Leighton. You've made a fabulous start. You started it and you finished it for Australia here and you're through to the final. Thanks. Born to be king, Leighton Hewitt, without hesitation, saying it like it is, without reservation, Wayne Arthurs, the man who devastated Yevgeny Kapelnikov on the opening day, a vital part of the Australian team in this fairy tale finish. Australia winning today, Leighton Hewitt over Yevgeny Kapolnikov in straight sets, 6-4, 7-5 and 6-2. enthusiasm of Leighton Hewitt, the 12,000 crowd, capacity AMZ, saluting the new champion of Australian tennis. And I haven't seen John Newcomb move that quickly either, J.A., for a long time. No, there is a great feeling amongst this team. This is uh, somewhat reminiscent of 1953. It's not since 53 when uh, we've had our ranks depleted. Then it was Sedgman McGregor turning professional, leaving two 19-year-olds, Hode and Rosewell, to defend Australia in Davis Cup. They beat the world champions. Vic Stasius and Tony Travett in uh, Kuyong. And with our two top players out, Philippusis and Rafter, and with Todd Woodridge missing, 18-year-old Leighton Hewitt and Wayne Arthurs have just played the most magnificent tennis. A straight set victory, but to the 18-year-old South Australian. And uh, you're getting control the cough, forced to eat the words, but he's been playing the mind game all week in the build-up. But uh, he had to try and pull something out against this kid today, and he came back from the brink of disaster, didn't he, in that second set? He did. It was a hard-fought uh, match, but there are the statistics. The first serves in very low percentage of first serves for Kapelnikov at 45%. Kapelnikov more successful when the first ball went in. Double faults were a feature for Kapelnikov. 17 tell at crucial times. Forehand winners, much of a muchness. And backhand winner really favouring Leighton Hewitt, particularly across court. Kapelnikov won more than that. He came to the net far more often. And just uh, a quite a solid statistical win for Hewitt. But uh, where he really uh, benefited, I think, was uh, winning the critical point. He was so solid under pressure.